Hi, welcome to Fun Science with Rohini. To continue with the DNA, today we will learn about Bovary. Theodore Bovary came up with the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Sutton also at the same time came up with chromosomal theory of inheritance by studying grasshopper chromosomes, which were very distinct from each other. Now, Bovary took sea urchin as his model organism. And Bovary was the first to propose that chromosome number is reduced to half in mature oocytes and that sperm and egg have equal quantities of hereditary information or equal quantities of chromosomes. By that time, by the time Bovary did this experiment, it was already known that sperm nuclei fuses with the egg nuclei during fertilization. And uh, sea urchin was taken by Bovary as a model because sea urchin oocytes are transparent and all the stages of development can be observed. And Bovary shook a mm, container full of oocytes and he got fragmented oocytes. Some were normal in size, some oocytes were smaller in size and some fragments did not have any nucleus of the oocyte. When he saw this fragments without the nucleus, which he called as mirogons, he came up with the idea that probably, you know, he can, using these mirogons, he can um, prove the importance or he can prove the role of chromosomes in passing on the characters from parents to offsprings. So for proving that, he took two different uh, strains or species of uh, sea urchins. He took these two strains or species because the larva had different skeletal manifestations in both these species. And one was called spheroechinus, for simplicity's sake, I'm just calling it as echinus, and the other is called samechinus or p echinus here. And these are hypothetical diagrams of the larvae. And the, the point here is these two species can show different skeletal manifestations in the larva, and the larva can be distinguished from one to the other. What I did was in the first experiment, in the control, he just took an oocyte egg for egg cell from uh, S. echinus and he fertilized it with uh, sperm from P. echinus and then he got a larva with intermediate manifestations and he said that this had intermediate manifestations because this larvae had chromosome set from the egg and chromosome set from the sperm as well. In the next experiment he just shook the container of oocytes and then he fertilized it with sperm from P. echinus. Now the S. echinus fragments when fertilized show showed three different kinds of larvae. One was intermediate like in the first experiment we have seen. So therefore he said this came from a normal oocyte and a sperm. Next was also showing intermediate characters between S. echinus and P. echinus but it was smaller in size. So he said this formed from smaller oocytes and in the third he saw that only P. echinus characters were represented. Therefore he said that mirogons were fertilized by the sperm from P. echinus and because of the absence of maternal chromosome set only the paternal features got inherited and the larvae here um, resembled the male parent because of the absence of the maternal chromosome set. And using this experiment, he proved or he stated that chromosomes carry the traits which were identified by Mendel. Thank you.